God bless you, people of God. Tonight is a pre-recorded video from one of our fantastic Tuesdays, and it's talking about judgment. So please stay with us as we look at this topic and see what the Bible says and see what we can do when it comes to judging others. I do hope you enjoy the broadcast. Let's get right into it. And so, um, you know, that's again that's part of our topic tonight because people always say you know don't judge me um the bible says well before we get started let's let's have a quick word of prayer okay so let's do that elder Bashana, would you be so kind as to lead us in a word of prayer before we get started yes ma'am mm -hmm. yeah, Father, God, thank you for being an awesome and amazing god god i hope ask that you help us to Illuminate the world to me, God. Help us to look at our perspective of, of your word, God, and give truth and understanding to those that are listening, God. Have your way in this and always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Amen. Jamina Belly, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate you. And um, tonight we're talking about judgment. What is it? What does it mean? And already, you know, it's a hot topic. <laughs> So we honor the Lord on tonight. And uh, of course, the scripture uh, says in uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses one, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, verses one through three, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? but consider not the being that is in thine own eye. So, you know, the world today, everybody says, you know, don't judge me. You know, sometimes it's a prerequisite for whatever they, they did or whatever they're about to do. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes to draw a line between, like you're saying, who a person is and what they do. And so um, I thought about like say for example you meet somebody and then during the course of this meet this conversation they may tell you that they have you know let's say they said they have hiv or something like that they're hiv positive you know and then you know what what is the initial reaction is the person taken aback or you know like what what is it that they think about the person they may not express it but then again during the course of the conversation they say, you know, when I was younger or a few years ago, I had a blood transfusion and this is the result of the transfusion. You know what I mean? Like, does that make you look at the person differently? Of course, you may or may not, you know, God forbid, say anything. But what is a judgment as opposed to stating the facts? You know, and that's why often we don't want to say like uh, we don't want to use the term like you're a this or you're a that because to me, that's passing judgment. Exactly what you said, Elder Rashana. The person is being judged for the incident or the situation or circumstance instead of saying that, you know, you're practicing this or you're doing that. You know, you're continually doing that. You know, and if the Bible says that, you know, people are sinners, is that a judgment? Is that a fact? Or, you know, we're sinners saved by grace instead of saying, you know, we practice sin, another scripture says, you know, the soul that sinneth continually sins shall surely die. So um, all of these types of things are kind of like out there. And, and we're living in a time and a season right now where people sort of are under the radar because they're using that, you know, don't judge me, don't judge me, don't judge me. And so I want to talk about what that is, what that means, and how do we separate that from, okay, look, <laughs> this is what you're doing, regardless of whether or not it's a judgment or not, this is what you're doing, and this is what the scripture says you shouldn't do. So I'm all out there. I mean, I'm, I'm out there with you now, Rashana. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so jump right in, okay? <laughs> Throw me a life breath, please. Um. Well, one thing, I think the difference between judgment and just stating a fact is a fruit inspector inspects your fruit to see what it looks like, and that's stating a fact. Hey, if the orange is rotten, it's rotten. A referee calls out all your fouls and all the things. There's a difference between a fruit inspector and a referee. A referee doesn't, does, doesn't do it in love. He just says, oh, that's a foul. 
And I think that's the difference. The fruit inspector says, oh, that's rotten fruit. We can't eat rotten fruit. Got to throw that away. Versus a referee just calls out everything that's wrong, doesn't try to give you any correction. They just offer, like the Pharisees, just, hey, you out on that. They don't try to give you any love or correction. I think for me, that's the difference between stating the fact, hey, is rotten fruit or a referee who just calls out all the fouls? Wow. No, another another extremely interesting perspective. Hey, TK Nika TV, God bless you. Welcome. Uh, uh, another. <laughs> Papa, I see you. <laughs> you think it, look, he finna drop the mic over there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I I love what you did with the judging, the judgment or the judging thing. Um, I do believe that um, Matthew's is, a, of course, the words of Christ, right? And um, the cross reference scripture to um, uh, St. Matthew's um, first chapter, I mean, first verse yeah, is Romans. Go ahead. Seven, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Seven, seven chapter, first verse. The cross reference to that is is uh, Romans the fourteenth chapter. Okay. And Romans the fourteenth uh, chapter addresses those who are weak in the faith. And um, when I look at this, when I look at this, the judge not that you be that you be judged. I go to the fourth verse. It says, "It says, um, who art thou that judgeth another man's servant?" To his own master, he standeth or falleth. Yet he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Right, and then it says, "Yes." Um, he speaks about um, one eats and one doesn't eat. So the one that doesn't eat don't judge the one that does eat, and the one that uh, and vice versa. Some esteem one day higher than another, and some you know do something different. But let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And what that means by their own convictions. So I think when you talk about the judging thing here, we're dealing with um, weak and strong. Those, those of us that are our brother's keeper and those brothers that need to be kept until they can become a brother's keeper, if that makes sense. So um, Jesus is making sure that we don't judge them or condemn them. Um, in essence, kill them because those that are weak have to be spoon fed. Um, also, when I look at the word uh, judgment or judging and, and or stating the fact that you said that earlier, that is sometimes used, stating the fact sometimes is used when a person is making a statement that sounds rude or inappropriate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, so that judgment is not, a, is not a, a word to bring reconciliation or a word to bring change or a word to bring healing, but it is a word to bring condemnation. And this is the judgment that um, the seventh chapter of St. Matthew is talking about, that Jesus wrote, is the judgment or stating the fact, as many people do say. I'm just stating the fact. It can be the truth. It can be the right. But if the word that we bring brings condemnation, and we bring condemnation in using the name of Christ, then we're not bringing the message uh, the, of the gospel, which this is. St. Matthew is the gospel. For the gospel is a message of the good news. Now, yes, it's some positive and some negative. It's some corrections. But it's, but all words that are fulfilled here in the book of Romans are fulfilled in one word, all the law, when Jesus came in the flesh. And it's fulfilled in one word, and that word is love. So even though I'm here to, to judge or to a state of fact, I need to make sure that when I'm doing it, I'm doing it as the Bible says, you know, judging and thinking of myself. Apostle Paul put the dependence. I mean, um, I went to the Ephesians. Um, be not deceived, I believe it is, or the Galatians. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That essence, that is, if I'm going to bring correction, if I'm going to bring judgment, make sure that I bring the other side of that. So if you're coming to whip somebody, you're coming to rebuke someone, you're coming to, to correct something, make sure that after we do the cutting, that we also do the healing or the stitching up when we finish. <laughs> My God. Okay, y'all, that's it. We might as well go home now. <laughs> <laughs> and can I say this too? 
and, and oh, look, God, better God, and, make it play. Oh my and, God, go ahead. And when and when you judge something, you're not condemning it; you are evaluating it. Are you hear what I'm saying? You so so you, when you judge when we are judging things, we are examining it, we are evaluating it, and guess what we're doing? We're operating in the gift of the Spirit, and the gift that we're operating in is discernment. Discernment, discernment. As Elder Vashana said a minute ago, I, I love what she said, fruit inspector. But what I thought about that was, I, people say you judge me. I'm not judging you. The fruit that's hanging off of you tells me who you are. Wow. When a person, when a person shows you who they are, I believe them. <laughs> so that's not judging them. That's stating the fact, you know. And so sometimes, if if the truth is condemning one then the truth is what we need to hear and receive, but also let that thing pass so that we can walk into the new thing, the newness of God. So uh, according to the scriptures, judging would be evaluating or discerning, discerning according to the scriptures. And passing judgment, I like this, when we pass judgment, now that can be a negative thing because that is the, that is the assumption that people are already guilty and we act like we hold the verdict. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and and doing that kind of judgment is not biblical. That's not godly. You know what I mean? To um to pass judgment with an assumption as though we heard, we hold the verdict. But you you know what I mean? That's not what we're called to do. And sometimes people do those we, we use that to um to make a statement that is rude or inappropriate. Uh so that we even claim that um, we are simply being truthful. I am simply just calling it as I see it. I am just, you know, we we say all those things in expressing, uh, evaluating or judging, but in essence, it's not a rebuilding; it is a tearing down. So if we're going to operate like the word said, judge, then make sure that we consider ourselves, because I'm sure that we won't. I'm sure that we won't stab ourselves. I'm sure that we won't cut ourselves. I'm sure we want a word that identifies us, but also a word that heals us. Amen. Amen, man of God. Absolutely. Just, just, just shed some light on it. You know, but if if you can't get it can't get any plainer than that. Two things you made me think of. Um, you know, there were judges in the Bible when you talked about having discernment. You know, to judge something is to evaluate, and there were judges in the Bible. And so um, that is an office. It is a position. It is an assignment for, you know, some people. We have judges in the world when there are disputes, you know, and it, it can't, they can't be resolved among the two people or the two entities, two companies or whatever. Then they have to go to court and allow a judgment to be passed. And that definitely calls for um, discernment, man of God, like you said. The second thing you made, and we can definitely talk about that. The second thing you made me think of is, you know, we always think of judgment negatively, but sometimes we pass judgment on a person um, prematurely. Yep, and, you know, sure. and we think the person is a good person or a kind person. It makes me think about this TV show called Love is Blind, you know, where the people fall in love and they're absolutely sure they have passed judgment on this person that they've never seen based on a conversation in front of a wall. <laughs> and once wow. they meet and start having to live together and be together, then, you know, they find out that their judgment about this person may have been skewed because it was in a confined, isolated, limited setting. I mean, let's face it, it's just like David, you know, if you're dating someone, you, you're judging that person based on what you see of them, you know? And that depends on how often y'all date or how often you're together. You know, you you know, as they say, you never know a person until you live with them. So it's based on what you what is in front of you. So, you know, again, those are two different uh things that you that you make me think about in terms of that. You know, like we often, like you said, use judgment in the wrong, in the wrong way. Absolutely. And, and 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 based on you know the biblical examples of the judge, you know we, we can be completely out of order. And especially you know like us as preachers, you know 
we know that when you preach a word and and I'm sure, you know, you've heard like, <laughs> did anybody tell you my business? You know, like you preach, you know, you was talking directly to me, like what's going on? Like you people who have, I have preached messages where people were wondering, you know, did somebody tell, tell me, tell them something, tell me something about them. And I'm like, no, you know, but that's the word of God coming across, you know, talking to the person specifically. But when we as leaders use um, our judgment in a negative way uh, to point out the facts about something, the facts may not always be the truth about something. The truth of the matter is, you know, the person is a good person or the person is, you know, they have displayed, as you said, Elder Rashana, their fruit displays, both of, both of you said that, who they are. But in this particular case, the fact of the matter is you did something that was out of character okay or uh, you know it, it doesn't align up with who you are that's the fact of the matter but the truth of the matter is you know you may be a good person so ladies and gentlemen <laughs> you jump in well, and respond if you have any well, thoughts well when you said judge i thought you said like i said judging judgment is an act a judgment is an act that is against an individual or a group of people or a group of people, when a judgment is passed, then the verdict has already been given, right? Mm -hmm. But when we judge something, you know what I mean? That's a prerequisite, or that's or that's that's I say that's a prerequisite. But judging something is identifying it, evaluating it. You know what I mean? Seeking to get the truth, seeking to find the truth. You know, and like you said, Pastor Kim. So sometimes we even go through the word assumptions while we're judging. But once judgment has been pronounced, the verdict is already, that's it. That's, mm. you know what I mean? You know, and then you said the judge, I like that, and the illustration you use the judge. Um, the judge, a judge represents in a natural someone who, um, um, brings order in the verdict, in the truth, or, or not the truth. But a judge is someone that brings order. They hold, they help to hold boundaries in a court environment or an environment where truth is being sought out you know what i mean so a judge is like almost like a referee to a degree you know he stands between the prosecutor or she stands between the prosecutor and the district attorney they're not on either one side they stand in the middle between the two making sure that the proceedings that are taking place are done in a civil manner and in order so when one acts as a judge they have been simply assigned to um, usher in law and order. But when judgment has been pronounced, I say it again, the verdict has already been called. Amen. Amen. Um, and, um, you know, I, again, that's that's just, you know, you, you, you made a play. When judgment, when a person passes judgment, the verdict has already been, anna uh, been announced. You know, um, Solomon was known as one of the, you know, the wisest man in the Bible, if I'm not correct, yeah, and, uh, the wisest man on earth, you know, he, he has a lot, he has a long history <laughs> and he is yet counted as the wisest man and, and having that discernment, that ability to hear two sides of a situation and then discern and then, and then judge it. Okay. And so, um, it brings me to this particular scripture, uh, first Kings, the third chapter, where it talks about and and definitely um please add to it where it talks about um verse 16 first kings third chapter the two women who were prostitutes came to the king and stood before him the yes. one woman said pardon me my lord this woman and i live in the same house and i gave birth to a child while she was in the house and it happened on the third day after i gave birth that this woman also gave birth to a child and we were together there was no stranger with us in the house, only the two of us in the house. Then this woman's son died in the night because she laid on she laid on him. She laid on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from beside me while your servant was asleep. And she laid him at her breast and laid her dead son at my breast. When I got up in the morning to nurse my son, behold, he was dead. But when I examined him closely in the morning, behold, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the other woman said, no, for the living one is my son and the dead one is your son. 
But the first woman said, no, for the dead one is your son and the living one is my son. So they spoke before the king. So clearly they have a dilemma here and um, they have come before King Solomon to judge this matter. Then the king said, the one says, this is my son who is living and your son is the dead one. And the other says, no, for your son is dead, is the dead one and my son is the living one. And the king said, get me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king and the king said, cut the living baby in two and give half to the one and half to the other. <laughs> yes. the woman, go ahead, man of God. No, you, you took the words out of my mouth. I was just getting ready to say that. You took the thoughts out of my mouth before you even read this story. I was going to use that as a judge, you know, a judge, you know, standing between both sides, getting the truth. But I want you to finish. <laughs> <laughs> but the but the woman whose child was was the living one spoke to the king, for she was deeply stirred over her son, and she said, "Pardon me, my lord. Give her the living child, and by no means kill him." But the other woman would say, "He shall be neither mine nor yours. Cut him." Then the king replied, "Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him. She is his mother." When all Israel heard about the judgment which the king had handed down, they feared the king because they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. <laughs> that's it. That's not, and, and now, now, that's what a judge is. You know, he or she is one, as I said earlier, um, he or she is one who, who is in the office, you know what I mean, to bring order. And to and to be a referee in the middle. Now, who would have thought of that? Think about it. Who would have thought about bring my sword and and kill the child? I don't know anybody that would think that Solomon was definitely a wise man, and he got to the truth. And not only that, but guess what? He exposed the heart of the mother whose son had died. Not only did she kill her son in the sleep, but she was willing to see the the living son die, so that both of them have no son. And she was willing to live. She was willing to live with herself with that. Isn't that amazing? Loves company. <laughs> loves company. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Myself, I just gotta. Oh Lord, you know how you just be walking. Like, wait, why you gotta bring me to your misery? Just keep your misery over there. Like, um, we talked about it at work. Um, somebody was like, "Why do you do what you do?" Um, I don't brag, but I'm an amazing teacher. So the um the lady was like, "You go above and beyond." I was like, "Yo, if you want to be mediocre." Keep that over there with you. Like, why drag me down to your mediocrity? Because you don't want nobody to shine. Like, if you want to just come in here and get your check, do that. But don't bring me down to your your like mediocrity. I'm like, that's the thing. Like in the church as well as in the world, people be like, hey, I want you to be miserable because I'm miserable. Like, no. Nope. Well, because you know why? Because to be on top costs you. My God. And, and, and the deep thing is, there are people that are afraid to be where you are because they think the price. What you are, it looks like it costs too much to get to. But what they really don't see is that they're paying more to be where they are than you are for where you are. It, it, it costs you more to be negative than to be positive. It costs more, it costs more attitude, more depression, oppression, more evil, more unforgiving, unforgiveness to stay beneath prosperity. And so when people look at someone that's producing and who's an asset, and who is uh, excelling, I, we sometimes see them as, that's, I don't want to be there. I don't want to walk in those shoes, but I'd rather walk in my shoes. And it costs a lot more. I'm paying a lot more walking beneath my privilege than allowing God to reach me up to where he is. Me, if I can say this, look at the man they laid at the, at the gate, at the gate called Beautiful. Peter and John is going into the temple at the ninth hour to pray, right? And when they, they get ready to go in to pray, the scripture says that there's a man that's there, been lame from his mother's womb. You can't read the story now but because of time. But he was late. Every day somebody brought him there to beg. And every day he was okay with that. So, look, look, he had a need and he was asked to. And many people judged him as nothing, as beneath. And sometimes we become what we've been judged as or what we've been told we are. And we don't reach, we don't reach uh, beyond that. And that's when we pass judgment, as Pastor Kim said earlier. And I don't want to pass judgment on someone that looks like they're, they're in a negative place. As I read a minute ago in the cross reference to that, that John 7 chapter, Romans 14. What am I supposed to do to those that appear to be weaker than me? 
I am not there to pass a greater judgment on top of them when they're already in judgment. You know what I mean? So yeah. he, he was asking for alms. He was begging. And Peter, being who he was, he responded to the man and said, look at us. And the man looked at him um, as though he was expecting to get something from them. Because Peter directed him to fasten his eyes on him. And he said, listen, we ain't got no silver and gold. Silver and gold have we none. But such as I have as we have. Pick up, you know, get up. And the scripture says he, he gave him the word to rise up. But then what did he do next? See what I mean? He said again, Pastor. Follow. Yes. He, he, he stretched forth his hand. And the Bible says he picked him by, by the right hand. And he lifted him up. See what I mean? So he didn't let the judgment that was on this man make him not, you know, restore him. So I don't believe that God's allowing us to see stuff that's that's in a bad place or in a negative place for us to pass judgment and condemn them. It is what it is, but it doesn't have to stay what it is if we have God in us. If we have God in us and God has shown us some things and we see it, as Pastor Kim just read through discernment, and you can see where I am or where someone else is, you don't judge me. Fine. Call it like you see it. But don't call it like you see it and leave me in this state. Because if God gave you the answer to where I am, then I believe that he has also given you the result to bring me from this place. He would, he, he would not allow you to see me and not help me. He would not allow you to identify that I'm in a bad place, that I'm not a good brother, I'm not a good man, I'm not a good father, I'm not a good husband, I'm not a good man, I'm not a good human being, that I don't deserve this in the natural. But if he's allowing you to see me, expose me, call me on the carpet, but know this, that I am your assignment. You are my keeper. Don't judge me and leave me there. Judge me and pick me up. Peter felt that the man, listen, he was, he couldn't walk. And the man was begging. And I love this because he said, silver and gold have we not. In other words, I don't have what you're asking. But what I got is what you need. What I'm offering you is what you need. Now, I've already judged your present state. Yes, I've already deserved your present condition. I don't know why somebody bringing you to the gate Every time the ninth hour of prayer comes, the time of prayer service going on and leave you here and they go inside and pray. But guess what? I'm not going to go into the temple without you. <laughs> Listen, you stopped me when I was getting ready to go pray. I've already, I've already deserved where you are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to give you something before I go to pray. And when Peter, when Peter and John gave him, was more than what he asked for, more than what he bargained for. They took him from where he was to where God wants him. So if, if we're going to judge and we're going to um, throw in judgment, don't pass judgment unless unless you're going to bring restoration. Now, if you're not going to bring restoration, then we might as well not even judge because, because we're not considering ourselves. Because only but by the grace of God, we are where we are. We are who we are. And all that we think we are, we still ain't all that God wants us to be. I'm done. I got the mic. Woo-wee. Good Lord of mercy. <laughs> Man of God, that was just so that powerful. Just, just, just that, a thought. Listen, <laughs> if that was just a thought, we're in trouble. I felt like I was in the ring, like boxing and weaving, like, woo, good Lord, Jesus. Because, listen, that's the icing on the cake. If you didn't bring that to light, whoever listens from this point forward, you know, if you if you didn't catch it, you you completely listen. I hate to pass judgment, but you missed it. Okay, you need to go back and watch this this part again because again, we as leaders, to me in the church, we miss it. You know, we come, you know, from the from the pulpit with that with that judgment. Many leaders come with that judgment. Okay, but like you said, if you're not coming with restoration then don't even bother to judge because that's who we're about. That's the icing on the cake right there. If we're not coming with restoration and if the truth be told, you know, many, many churches today, they don't even want to go in certain neighborhoods. You know, they don't want to minister to certain demographics because of the, the hardship and the things that might be going on in those in those demographics. You know, that's how church has gotten so today that you can pick a demographic that you want to minister to. Are you listening to me? But that's guess what? 
as you just so eloquently and made it plain, drop the mic, said, look, if you're going to pass judgment, you better make sure you come in with restoration. And that's exactly what Jesus did. did. While you were talking, you made me think of the woman, you know, <clears throat> the adulterous woman. And when the Pharisees came, you know, he said, we, we all know that. He said, look, he who has no sin, none whatsoever, you know, pick up a rock and hit her with it. Just, just pick up a rock and throw it at her. If exactly. you don't have any sin at all, pick up a rock and hit her. Then go ahead. You know, that's 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 Kim's interpretation. Okay. He who has no sin, cast the first stone. He who has no sin amongst you, Pharisees, amongst you leaders, amongst you Christian folks, he who has no sin, pick up a rock and throw it at her. Well, you know what, Pastor Kim, can I say this? A lot of times, a lot of times I think, you know, as you say, leaders, I'm gonna say mothers, fathers husbands, wives, uh, principals of schools, just because people are in position does not mean that they're qualified. Uh, that's, just, that's, that's, that's just a thought. I don't know, Sean, if you want to jump in before I finish that? No, go ahead. Okay, and so, and so don't lose your thought. And so what I thought of when you said that, I thought of, I thought of Gideon quickly, Zerubbabel, and, and, and what happened? And he had 32,000 soldiers to fight against the, the Midianites. And, and he, he had a lot of numbers. But sometimes we, in the spiritual realm, we underestimate who we're coming up against because we see numbers with us. So we, we assume that we can take this. You know what I mean? So sometimes we look in the, the mothers think we got it, fathers think we got it, preachers think we got it. But guess what? As long as we think we got it, we don't have it. Because guess what? Yeah, no, because we only have it in Christ, in God. We only, that's when we got it. And, and God reduced him. The first thing he did was, he said, all of those before they went to battle, God told Gideon, all of those that have fear and are fearful and are afraid. Look at this. I said, but these are men. They soldiers. They can make go do battle. Right? He said, all of those are fearful, send them back home. And it was 22,000. I'm like, well, wait a minute, hold it. 22,000 men that have been prepared to fight their soldiers, they got weapons, but they got fear. He said, send them home. And so he's left with 10,000. And then the Lord said, uh, what you have, what you have now still ain't the number. You know what I mean? Signifying to me when I read that scripture, signifying there are many of us who are in positions. And Apostle Paul told Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Many of us know how to divide it. We know what it's saying, but we don't, we lack sometimes application of what we divide, of, of what, you know what I mean? Of what we divide. It's one thing, you know, to know I need the word of God. Feed me the Bible. Feed me the word. Encourage me. But right now I'm hungry. My stomach is round. I can't hear your message until you first feed me. You know, and so a lot of times application comes with dividing. Knowing how to rightly divide that word is good, but knowing application is really more important. So I just wanted to just say that 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 um he reduced them to what he needed. So many times we think we are what we need to do this. I am what I need to do this. I, I got this, God. I got this church. I got this. And then God reminds many leaders, you don't have it. Many mothers, you don't have it. Many fathers, you don't have it. I know you wear the hat. I know you sit in the seat. But because you are in position, you have made no room for me. So I cannot equip you with what you need to be complete in this assignment. You're judging others well, but who judging you? Go ahead, Rashada. Woo. Well, I gotta go back because I wanted to say something before. Uh, <laughs> like, if it ain't your assignment, why are you inspecting the fruit? Like, you inspecting the fruit off of somebody else's tree. It's like, if my neighbor got a fruit tree in his yard, why am I inspecting his fruit? That ain't my tree. Like, God said, um, you read a scripture earlier about the master um, has the ability to, to judge. Oftentimes, just because we're in positions of leadership, we're judging stuff that ain't our assignment. If it ain't my assignment, why am I even looking at their fruit? There are some things that I can see and pray about, and there are some things that he's called me to correct. But if it ain't assigned to me, I have no business looking at my neighbor's fruit in his yard because it ain't mine. And we be trying to kill and cut everything up. Well, we are assigned to a certain people. 
because there are certain people that I can speak to a certain way and they're called to me and I say, hey, sis, you know, tighten that up and they're good. But I can say tighten it up to somebody else and they got the whole screw face because they ain't called to me. You got to know who you're called to and who God assigned you to because every man won't be drawn to you. Every, every woman won't be drawn to you. You got to know your assignment and then you can start inspecting fruit of those that are assigned to you, not everybody. Because then you out here just picking fruit all willy-nilly from everybody tree and that's not what God called you to do. And then, and then accept accept assignments. There are some people that are stuck in the old. I just did a men's fellowship over the weekend with some brothers, and I bless them put us with this word. God, I mean, God gave it to me. He said, the Lord spoke to me. He said, my body is out of, is, you know, is disconnect. The head is, you know, cut off. The the hands are disconnected from the wrist. The arms are disconnected disconnected from the torso. So I'm saying, like, wow, what is this? So it's, it's, it's the body of Christ. We're talking about now, right? But it cannot flow properly. It can't even flow at all. Why? Because we cannot operate if we abide alone. The only way that we can be complete is we must be connected. And not just connected where we want to be connected, but connected to the area that God has called us to be connected to. So that was one thing. And um, the, the powerful piece there for me when I got that message was um, John the Baptist said, I am not he. But I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, right? But what was John doing? John was baptizing. Now, baptizing ain't wrong, but that was John's assignment. And the, some of us in this day and time, we have made uh, uh, religion out of baptizing. But we're stuck in John's assignment. But John, if you read the book, John says, there is one that's coming after me who is preferred before me. And then when you read the first book of John, the first verses, he was in the beginning, the word, and there was nothing made. So even though he's coming after me, he was already here before all of this took place. So John was prophesying. But, but this is the part that blessed me. He said, when as I am baptizing you with water, he that is coming after me is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So somebody said to me, well, God, he's God. He don't change. I said, no, he don't have to change because he is everything. He is omnipotent, omnipresent. But who has to change is us. And some of the church is stuck in assignments. And we have made the assignments the gospel. And that's not the gospel. The gospel is the good news. So I want to make sure we deliver the good news. People are going to be delivered and saved and healed and set free by the good news. But if I hold somebody else's assignment up as the gospel, we're going to continue to lose a generation of people. And that's judging the church. Man of God, woman of God, awesome, awesome. Y'all made me think of two things. You know, this, this awesome word and just making it very, very plain. You know, I heard this from one of my spiritual leaders, very powerful, very wise. And he said, people, and it's, it's, it's tied into the same thing that you were saying, Elder Rashawn, that assignment. People, he said, people give you permission, permission to correct them, permission to you know, tell them permission to put them in their place. Everybody can't just, like you said, walk up and do that, you know, but people give you permission to do that. And if you do it and you're out of order when you're doing it, then you could definitely kill someone or, you know, spiritually, of course, or people won't receive you at all. Amen. So I heard that from one of my spiritual leaders. No, his name is um, Prophet Williams. He taught that a while ago. People give you, people give you uh, permission permission to um to you know correct them and so you made me think of that it was another one more thing that i was thinking about and it slipped my mind sometimes i have my pen on the side where i can write my thoughts down hopefully it'll come back to me but you know just um just very powerful what was that last thing you said man of god do you, do you recall Elder Sean, what's the last part no oh, we don't remember oh, oh, when, I, when, I, when i talked about the um about us of uh, about judging Yes. Oh, yeah. Judging in the um, yeah, judging. Just you know, we we have to we ourselves. You know, we have to look at ourselves first. It was some. It was another thought, but it'll come back to me hopefully in the next minute or two. But um, just just I hope that those of you who are here in the chat, I, you know, if you have a comment, something you want to say, if you have a question, please go ahead because it is really, you know, it's be it's a blessing and this this is absolutely shedding shedding light on um on judgment, on, on how we judge others, on what judgment is all about, you know, and even as leaders, you know, that, that, um, 
that part where um, you said, man of God, don't even think about uh, judging if you're not going to provide restoration. Like, what's the Absolutely. point? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Why do surgery and don't stitch the person back up when you finish taking out the infected part? Mm, 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 you, mm. You, 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 cut them, you cut them open and got the bad part out, but you haven't closed them back up. Mm. And the word should be a two-edged sword. One cuts and the other side severs you back in. It's a two-edged sword. It does both. It does it. I cut you open and then I seal you back up. So you shouldn't be offering any word that doesn't do both things. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, we thank the Lord. You know, this has been a powerful um, session and um, just honoring God in this and just shedding light on, you know, that that judgment and what it means and, you know, what, how we how we ought to go about it. Just be very, very careful, first of all how we use the term judgment, how we use the term judge, and, you know, being a, having the ability to to discern, you know, between the two. And and what are we judging for? What, what are we looking at? And why are we looking at it? You know, um, again, so many wonderful scriptures and examples that were given, you know, how everybody walked. And this is, you know, how everybody walked past the man going into the temple, okay? walk past them going into the temple to worship. It's not that amazing? And so we have to be careful. We have to be mindful of these things. I hope each and every one of you, hey, short bus, God bless you. Hey, Alethea, God bless you. Thank you all so much for coming in. You know, we have to be so, so careful on um on um this whole judgment thing. And last but not least, you know, the Lord said, guess what? I'm going to separate the wheat from the tear. <laughs> That's what he said. And they look very much alike, okay? They, they grow together. They, they grow together. <laughs> they, they, they grow together. <laughs> yes, they do, man of God. And the only way you can tell them, the only way they start getting separated, and I know y'all know, is when the beating comes. <laughs> when the pressure comes, they used to take that and start hitting it and hitting it. And that's yeah. what was separated. So God is going to do the separating from the wheat and the tear. Yes, he is. Those who, those who come up and, and say they're saved, look saved, act saved, he's going to separate. And so I can't tell you how, but I know how the wheat and the tear were separated. They were separated through any thrashing, okay? Well, we, go ahead, love, go ahead love, somebody, go ahead. I love the thought that you gave earlier. I had forgotten it, but I love the thought you gave earlier. When you thought about the woman with Solomon, um, the two women with the baby, and I found out that one thing that judging is supposed to do, um, and the judge does, is get to the truth. When we judge um, spiritually, it is only to bring restoration, one, and two, is to bring the truth. And so we do need to be in a spirit to be able to discern good and evil, right and wrong. And that's what, so when you read that scripture, that's what Solomon did. He was able to discern the two. And he got to the truth with a simple phrase, cut the baby in half and give each woman half. So sit there fighting over one baby who was living, cut it in half and give it. And guess what? The truth came out. The, the, the one mother would rather, the real mother would rather her child live with another person than die with having half of his body. So he, he got judging, discerning, allowed him to get to the truth. And that's what we're supposed to do. The gospel that we read, the book of the word of God, is supposed to find us, to bring the truth. The parts that don't nobody else want to talk about, that maybe nobody else do know, but we know. And that's why the scripture says, confess your stuff one to another. You know what I mean? Judge yourself so we don't have to be judged by other folks. <laughs> and that's just a thought. Amen. A amen. Amen. And that's listen, like you said, absolutely scripture. A absolutely. We judge we judging the beam in our eye. I mean, we judging the speck in somebody else's eye and instead of the beam in our own. You know, so it's it's so so true. Uh, Rashawn, you got any, anything else you want to say, dear? No, no ma'am. <laughs> Say hello to Short Bus. God bless you once again. Everybody that came in, Alethea James, Money 15. I saw Pam in here earlier. Chase Bus Philly, TK Nigga TV, 
Sharina Belly, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming in. And Katie Moore, God bless you. Those of you who are in the balcony on the Facebook and the YouTube side, I appreciate you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming in. Please don't forget to share this out. This is a blessing to someone when we talk about judgment, what it is, you know, discernment, all of that. When we talk about judging, it's a blessing to someone that's going to share, shed the light. I believe each and every person on this platform is a love preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says some are one by love and, and uh, some are one by fire. And I believe that um, every person on this platform is just a, a, a love preacher. We believe in winning people by love. You know, if you, if you love someone and when a person recognizes your love, it compels them to want to to serve you, to help you, to do something for you, to reciprocate that love that's being shown. And that's that's what I believe. And that's what I believe that the people on this platform uh, share that thought process with me. Amen. 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 So I just thank God for y'all. We're going to get on out the way. Um, and uh, I love y'all. We love you. Hope you have a blessed evening and a purpose filled life. Any closing remarks before we're out the door? God bless. <laughs> I just want you to know before we go if someone has judged you prematurely, if someone has, you know, we can't do anything about that. You just have to love God and serve him. That's that's what counts, okay? Don't worry about people judging you. Don't worry about how they look at you. Don't worry about what they say about you. Just continue to focus and love the Lord. Focus on him and he will see you all the way through. Go ahead, I, think of it, I think of it as this, as, as Pastor Kim said, and Elder Rashada said, fruit inspectors. If someone has misjudged you, think, think of it as, you know, rotten fruit. Or, or a spot that is trying to get on you, you know, and the only way you can become contaminated is to stay in a place that doesn't respect your anointing, that doesn't respect who you are. So don't stay in, a, in an environment, in an environment that will contaminate you and put spots on you. For then you are open yourself not only to be judged, but then to, to allow judgment to be pronounced on you. Fruit, when it's in a basket, some may go rotten and some go bad. If you want to save the fruit, you got to remove it amongst the rotten fruit. You know, so separate yourself. Get around positive energy, positive people. Dismiss and dispel all negativity. If we are to grow into the new and to the next, Jesus said, behold, I make all things new. All things, all things have passed away. And behold, I take you into the new. And once he does that, guess what? You got to stay protected by not allowing yourself to be contaminated. God bless you. Amen, man of God. You know, I, I have to practice, you know, um, smiling because, you know, when the word of God, you know, in the in, in the African-American church, you know, when the word of God is good, you know, we just like frowning, shaking our head. No, it's just such a good word. So I have to practice smiling. <laughs> you good, you good. Um, Go ahead, man. God. <laughs> no, you're good. God bless you. Thank you so much. I enjoy you. being I enjoy being with you tonight. Oh, As always. <laughs> I always enjoy, you know, I always enjoy uh, you being here. I always enjoy Elder Rashad. I'm ever so grateful for y'all uh, showing up every Tuesday. I appreciate you so, so much. We're getting out the way, guys. We love you. Everybody that's in here, we love you. We thank God for you. Have a blessed evening and a purposeful life and know that we love you with that. Agape love. God bless. God bless. <laughs>